Hello and welcome to Biology 101. I'm Dr. Silva, your instructor. So how would you convince Crazy Gary that his pet rock is not alive? That's what we'll be talking about in this video. So this information comes from the first chapter in our textbooks, Concepts of Biology. And in this module, our learning outcomes are for learners to be able to define biology, recognize the characteristics of life, identify the characteristics of a science, recognize the limits of a science, and also to be able to define ethics. So our first lecture is going to be about what is biology itself and how do we characterize life. Then our next lecture video will be about what science is and the scientific method. And then the third for this module is what is ethics. So biology is the scientific study of life. In order to define life, scientists have a list of seven criteria which a substance must have. In order to be considered alive, if something is lacking even one of these characteristics, it is not considered to be alive. We refer to living objects as organisms. And so those will be things that have all of the characteristics of life. And those seven characteristics are order or organization, regulation and homeostasis, growth and development, energy processing, sensitivity or response to stimuli, reproduction, and adaptation. And those last two, reproduction and adaptation, they don't need to be true for the individual, but they do need to be true for the population. So first off, order. All organisms show complex organization. Life is almost always more organized than its surroundings. Cells are very organized and compose all life. This is where we can clearly see that organization. Every living organism is composed of one or more cells. Cells are the basic units of life. Bacteria, the simplest of organisms, are single-celled organisms. We use the term unicellular. Whereas an organism that is made up of many different specialized cells would be called multicellular. Multicellular. So that's the first characteristic of life. Next, Living organisms need to be able to regulate their internal conditions. They can do this through behavior such as going out into the sun or going into the shade, changing your environment, or through regulatory mechanisms, things like sweating or shivering. In order to be able to regulate their internal conditions, they need to be able to sense and respond to those internal conditions. We call the concept of, of keeping stable internal conditions, we call this homeostasis. And so living organisms attempt to maintain homeostasis within their body. Now, regulating temperature is one example of this, but we also regulate things like chemicals and pH and other, uh, really any variable we try to remain somewhat constant within our body. Another aspect of all living organisms is that all organisms increase in size and complexity. Over the course of their life. All of us are larger now than we were when we were born. This growth and development is directed 
by the information in an organism's genetic material. So, in the same way that an acorn can grow into a seedling, then a sapling, and then a mature oak tree, we all started as a fertilized egg that divided to become an embryo, and a fetus, and a baby, and then a juvenile, an adolescent, and then an adult. In order to do this, it requires energy. Growing requires energy. All living organisms get their energy from their environment. Here we see a puffin consuming fish. The bird is going to get its energy from the food that it eats. Now some organisms are able to use the energy of sunlight. They capture sun's energy via a process called photosynthesis. And in this process, they convert sunlight into chemical energy. Some forms of life use energy from other living organisms. They must consume plants or animals in order to get their energy. This brings us to the next characteristic of life, and that is that organisms need to be aware of their surroundings. They need to have sensitivity to it. They need to be able to respond, whether it's due to the presence of danger or food sources. Many organisms have multiple senses. In humans, smell, hearing, taste, touch, sight, and others are the senses that we have, and these may be similar or different to senses that other organisms have. The next characteristic of life that I'd like to talk about is reproduction. Living organisms need to be able to produce offspring of a similar type to the parents. This characteristic needs only be met by a population not an individual member. So we would consider individual members to still be alive even if they haven't reproduced yet. But if the population is not able to reproduce, then it's likely not considered an organism. In order to reproduce, first, the cells must divide. Before a cell is able to divide, it has to copy its genetic material. In this way, the genetic material is passed from parents to offspring. And that genetic material is DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. It is the genetic material for all cells. The last characteristic of life is adaptation or evolution. Again, this is not something that happens to an individual. In fact, individual organisms do not evolve over the course of their life, regardless of what Pokemon tries to teach you. Instead, the change that is seen in a single lifespan is called growth and development. Even if there's a change in form, even if there are characteristics that are different, that growth and development is guided by the genetic material of that organism. It's the populations of an organism. That change their characteristics slowly over several generations. This is evolution or adaptation. The changing of the characteristics of a population is what is called adaptation. A population is defined as a group of organisms of the same species which live in the same area at the same time. In contrast, a species is a group of organisms capable of reproducing and forming fertile offspring 
meaning offspring that themselves could reproduce. Natural selection is one of the driving mechanisms of adaptation or evolution. The natural survival and increased reproductive success of certain individuals of a population over others is known as natural selection, and it drives adaptation. In this particular diagram, we see a starting population of beetles that have variation in the coloration of their shells. These beetles happen to live on a dark colored background. This beetle population also has a visual predator, a bird, which will come and try to eat the beetles that it sees. Those beetles that have the greatest contrast with their background are the ones that are first seen and consumed by the birds. This means that those lightly colored beetles survive for a shorter period of time. They don't produce as many offspring. They are not going to have their genetic material represented as much in that next generation. And so over many generations, we see a general darkening of the shades of these beetles because of that natural selection. The more darkly colored beetles survived more, they produced more offspring, they made up larger portions of the next generation. Now there's also something known as artificial selection. This is humans performing controlled breeding and domestication of both plants and animals. And it really is able to show a population's capacity to change when particular traits are selected for. Here in this slide, we see many different types of vegetables with broccoli and cauliflower and kale and purple cabbage and Brussels sprouts. All of these different types of vegetables originated from the same species of plant, from the same species of mustard that ended up being cultivated by humans, bred and selected for different traits. And now we have all these different varieties of vegetables. They're all the same species. Likewise, we see a group of different types of dogs everything from Huskies and St. Bernards and Golden Retrievers and Dalmatians and Bulldogs and others. All of these different breeds and varieties of dogs are the results of human domestication of the gray wolf. This artificial selection occurs much more rapidly than natural selection, but it just shows how much variation and genetic variability can be found within a population. So, Again, our characteristics of life are order, regulation and homeostasis, growth and development, energy processing, sensitivity or response to stimuli, reproduction, and adaptation. That takes us through our discussion of the characteristics of life. In our next video, we'll talk about what it takes for something to be a science.